you. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in here to Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater, airing here on 8.30 a.m. WCRN. This morning, I have the privilege and pleasure of speaking with Gary Hirschberg. Gary is the co-founder and chairman of Stonyfield Farm Yogurt, and he is going to be the speaker in the final segment of our Distinguished Speaker Series sponsored by UMass Medical School. Welcome, Gary. Nice to be with you, Lisa. Oh, well, we are looking forward to having you at the theater, and that's Thursday, May 16th. And boy, your resume reads like a who's who of green and ag and all the rest. For those of... (laughs) <laughs> right? For the for the members of our audience who aren't familiar with your background, can you give us a little bit of how you got to Stonyfield Farm Yogurt in the first place? Sure. Well, we, uh, my partner Samuel came in and I started Stonyfield back in 1983 uh, at a time when uh, really nobody knew, very few people were eating yogurt and no one knew what organic was. Uh, prior to then, I had been the executive director of an institute down in Cape Cod called the New Alchemy Institute, which was uh, kind of a leading think tank and and R&D development uh, place for uh, solar, wind, renewable energy, ecological agriculture, organic agriculture, aquaculture. Uh, A lot of stuff that's become very commonplace today, but was, of course, in the 70s, uh, uh, you know, a little bit lonely. (laughs) Well, I think you... We started Stonyfield uh, largely because um, we felt that we had proven concepts of how to grow food in a completely ecological manner without using uh, toxic pesticides and chemicals, without burning fossil fuels and so forth. But we believe that until we could prove these concepts in a commercial setting, and in other words, to show you can make money doing it, that we weren't going to have, uh, you know, create real believers. And of course, today, Stonyfield is, uh, I hope most of your listeners know Stonyfield, it's a it's, uh, fourth largest yogurt company in America. It's the largest organic yogurt company in the world, and uh, we have about 500 um, employees. We do about $350 million in sales. I believe it. I have been a fan of Stonyfield Farm Yogurt from the very beginning. I can tell you I knew what yogurt was back in 83 as a dancer, (laughs) and I grew up in a place where organic food was important and I think that it's really amazing that back in 83 you were one of the forerunners obviously because of your past experience on the Cape like you were explaining but things have changed so dramatically and it's funny you you say that you had to prove that you needed to make money raising good green food through the whole supply because you know we just had Jillian Michaels at the Hanover Theater talking about how you have to watch not brain surgery here you have to watch what you put into your body. Yeah, I mean, I think that we are what we eat, and I think we've been, many of us have been saying that for a long time. I think people are finally figuring that out. We unfortunately have a real epidemic of cancer in this country. There's a lot of uh, very concrete uh, environmental reasons to choose organic, but the, the, the really simple reality is it's, it's a way to avoid the unnecessary exposure to harmful chemicals uh, in our tissue. We uh, you know, we have studies now that show quite uh, uh, repeatedly and quite uh, emphatically that even uh, babies at the time of birth can have up to 16 or 17 compounds in their cord blood. Um, we have uh, uh, seen examples where the President's Cancer Panel uh, reported out that 41% of Americans are going to be diagnosed with cancer in our lifetimes. Back mm. when we started Stonyfield, that number was 20%. And this thing, and the smoking gun that the oncologists point to is uh, un- unintended or inadvertent exposure to chemicals in our everyday life. So I think a lot of people, most everybody knows somebody dealing with cancer. Most everybody knows that we do need to eat defensively. We need to be a lot more alert. And uh, this, of course, has been um, uh, you know, very good for our business and for the overall organic segment. But the truth is, is that organics, while we have enjoyed remarkable growth. We're now about a $31 billion industry. We're still only about 4% of U.S. food, so we have a long, long way to go. <laughs> There's still some saturation left to happen here. Oh, utterly. Uh, <laughs> you know, again, uh, again, the the interesting thing with uh, organics is that most people come to organics because they've had a health event. Mm-hmm. Uh, what they find when they switch over is that, in fact, they... they might have had preconceptions like this meant that they were going to have to chew extra. You know, that is, there's something, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's a 
food might be of, of lesser quality. And, of course, nowadays you can't find any gourmet restaurant uh, that doesn't tout their organic greens or their organic dairy or cheeses or wines or what have you because, again, it's what it really is is it's just simple, pure, good quality food made without a lot of the shortcuts that, again, have these unintended consequences. It's really amazing, and I'm glad that it's become popular, you know, especially for the health reasons, but also because of the economic reasons and the long-term sustainability, of course, of our water supply as well as our land. You know, I'm looking at your background. It says in 2001, you were named Managing Director of Stonyfield Europe with brands in Canada, Ireland, and France. What was that like taking this message internationally, or were they ahead of us? Uh, no, no. Uh, frankly, uh, the U.S. has been uh, uh, very advanced in organics, although um, the U.K. and um, Austria, interestingly, uh, would be even further along in terms of percentages. But um, no, we're 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 pretty uh, far along. I think again, we have had more health consequences here, whether they be consequences like our obesity epidemic, our diabetes epidemic, or again this these sort of skyrocketing cancer rates, um, you know, America has, uh, has uh, Americans have responded by, uh, in, in numbers, uh, seeking these alternatives. Um, that said, um, it's been really interesting being in other countries. We have now an, a, an Irish organic yogurt company called Glenis that I'm the, on the board of and acting as the chair these days. And uh, Glen Isk is uh, growing probably 28% this year. In a, mm. I, 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 I'm sure your listeners know the Irish economy, the Western European economy, is, is flat. It, 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 and, and Ireland is, you know, took its hits a little bit earlier than Spain and Italy and Greece, but it still took some hits. And yet here you've got an absolutely healthy, vibrant uh, company that is now the number one selling brand in Ireland. Wow! Uh, started started by five brothers and with a small farm, just like Stonyfield. Uh, in Paris and France, we have a brand called Les Devaches, the two cows, um, which I oversee. And again, it's growing twenty uh, percent this year in a, in a market I can tell you that's actually shrinking. Um, again, what's going on is people are discovering uh, they want to be more careful about what they're eating and, and primarily what they're feeding their children. Uh, but then when they try our products, they realize that they actually taste better. Right. And so, um, you know, we haven't, I haven't seen any place uh, around the world, and of course I'm affiliated with lots and lots of other organic uh, ventures uh, all over the world. I haven't seen any country that has any uh, particular advantage over any other, because at the end of the day what we're talking about is just sensible eating. A lot of times... Uh, even when I run into skeptics, particularly you know farmers who say, "Gee, why do I have to do this?" Uh, you know, you spend five minutes talking to them and explaining what we're up to, and they say, "Oh, oh I get it. You're just suggesting that I grow like my grandfather did, or like my father did." And and uh, and then you know you start to get into the conversation with them, and they realize, you know, they, they, they and they'll be the first to admit they don't like having to shower and wash before they can hug their kids at the end of the day because of the chemicals that are accumulated in their uh, on, on their gear or on mm. their on their coveralls or what have you and they they like the idea that they can raise their kids in a in an environment free of those kinds of concerns I think we're definitely getting back to that as a general society too which is really nice I think but yeah, there again, are challenges I, I right? I think this is what I'll be speaking about at the Hanover Theater is, is uh, there's a lot of unintended consequences to uh, many of our activities if you actually examine any aspect of humanity's relationship to the planet, you find that uh, we've sort of gone into these, I, I don't call them dead ends, I call them cul-de-sacs, places where we've, we've incurred unintended costs, uh, be it climate change or groundwater pollution or depletion or, or uh, decreased biodiversity or toxification. In, in all of these cases, no one set out to pollute, no one set out to warm the planet, but these are the choices that were, that, that these are the consequences that resulted from choices that we made to take shortcuts. And what we have proven at Stonyfield, what our organic industry has proven, what the renewable energy industry is proving, is that um, there are other ways to meet our basic needs of nutrition, of, of, of nourishment, of waste treatment, and, and to heat and power ourselves that don't have such a dire or um, damaging and, as you pointed out a moment ago, ultimately costly uh, consequences. America 
Uh, every time we burn a gallon of gas or a cubic meter of of natural gas, we're exporting the vast majority of that money out of this country. Mm. And, of course, we're also paying for it down the line with uh, increased uh, dependence on other nations and, and ultimately with some of the health care uh, costs. So, so what we're talking about here is really sound economics, good health, and, as you say, uh, common sense. Right. Now, also, I think it's important to realize you this company grew from, it says, a seven-cow organic farming school to $360 million in annual sales. And the way it says you did that is by consistently producing, of course, great-tasting products and then using some innovative marketing techniques just to blend the company's social, environmental, and financial missions. What were some of the cutting-edge fi- uh, marketing techniques that you used that other people weren't using? <laughs> Well, it's Tell funny. Me, as a marketing uh, I'm not sure person. I would, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I'm laughing only because I'm not sure that uh, you know traditional marketers would see us as cutting edge. Uh, honestly, a lot of what we did was we just spoke the truth. We just were very transparent about what we did. Our, our mission was always to try to kind of close the gap between uh, the consumer and how her food is produced by making her. I say her because my yogurt consumers, of course, are primarily women. <laughs> And aren't I typical? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, you know, that's uh, that may be, maybe because women are just more sensible, too. I mean, there's there a lot of go. different <laughs> – there's, there's a lot of uh, analysis to be done here or discussed here. But, 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 but the point is that um, uh, what we would do is we would use little gimmicks. Like, for example, um, in the early days, uh, we, again, our, our yogurt cost more. It was – handcrafted in, a, in small batches. We had we were paying farmers a higher price to not use these chemicals and hormones and so forth. And so, you know, we just couldn't compete on price. Um, and therefore, we didn't have the money for advertising. But what we did have was cows. So, for example, in the early days, we put cows up for adoption. And you could literally send in five yogurt lids and, and adopt a cow. You would get a certificate naming you the co-owner of a cow. You would get a photograph of your cow and then your cow in those days would send you a few letters per year uh we've become paperless the cows have become uh digital and now they send out multiple emails and tweet and blog to you uh so we're we're, we've actually been even more ecological but the point is is that those opportunities you know it's all meant in jest and you know we, we like to have a good time but but those were also opportunities to connect with the consumer and to explain what we're doing and why, and to talk about what's really going on on the farm, and to hear, give the consumer the chance to hear from the farmer uh, herself, so she could understand uh, what a difference it was making to them to uh, grow and raise their children in an organic, uh, um, um, uh, on, on an organic operation. And so, uh, this kind of informal, um, <clears throat> somewhat guerrilla approach uh, ultimately built. Uh, Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that wound up adopting uh, Stonyfield cows over the years. We still have the program, and this was, of course, before there was digital media, before there was what we now call social media. Um, but this was uh, a, 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 an inexpensive and affordable way to ultimately have a very powerful and effective relationship with our consumer. Oh, that's great. Well, and also you did author a book, stirring it up: how to make money and save the world. Indeed, it's uh, that's a great title. Well, it's uh, of course the stirring it up. We love we love our our, our yogurt puns, <laughs> uh, but uh, but really that is what Stonyfield. I mean, you know, I'm very proud of our yogurts. I'm very proud of our taste and our nutrition and our health benefits. I'm proud that we were the first um, U.S. produced Greek yogurt, for example. And we've always been on the front edge. I'm I'm proud of our incredible packaging innovations. All of the Packaging that we use with our multi packs, our 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 four ounce cups, is is all derived from plant material. It's not not made from plastic oh, that's or from great. oil, I should say. Um, you know, we've always done all these wonderful things, but ultimately, what we've really proven is what I said at the outset of this call that we you can it, it can be highly profitable. It can be more profitable when you do the right thing and when you take the time to really understand the consequences and take the time to um, and, and put the R&D effort into looking at alternatives that do not pollute, that do not have these, again, uh, unintended but, but very real uh, results from our kind of uh, voluntary blind spots, 
um, you can find that it opens up all kinds of opportunities for creativity and profitability. Well, and we're just scratching the surface here. This is just the tip of the iceberg of the things that you're going to be talking about, right? I am. I'm going to try to cover a lot of lot of ground, but uh, ultimately uh, make this a very practical um, discussion about what we all as consumers and, and those of us who are in business and commerce uh, from any angle, from the legal angle, from the financial angle, from wherever you're coming from, can help contribute to kind of expediting evolution and and, and, and really bringing just a more common sense approach to uh, to consumption and to to uh, to, to commercial activity. So I, I, I uh, look forward to having folks there and uh, look forward to our evening. Oh, I can't wait. And you know, everybody, this is very reasonably priced. Tickets are only $20. We do, of course, have some discounts available for our members and our corporate partners, WooCard members. And it's a great way to spend a Thursday night. You're definitely going to learn something new. You might think about things in a certain way, or it might just really reinforce the common sense that you already know and give you some more inspiration to making it part of what, our everyday life and our future, right, Gary? Indeed. Indeed. This is, uh, we don't have the past. We've, uh, all, all we've got right now is the future, and we really can't invent it. Right. So anything else you want to share with people before we, we part ways? No, I, uh, I look forward to, uh, to, to being with you and with everybody that evening. Well, we can't wait to have you. And please, there's more information, and tickets are available online at thehanovertheater.org. Check our website for the blog, reposting this interview. And, Gary, we'll see you at the theater. Can't wait. See you then. Take good care.